to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my latest set of reviews and updates of things I've been up to for this week. So only a few things to talk about, but mostly updates and then a slight follow-up to a quick um, episode that I put out earlier in the week, just as a kind of FYI, changes, updates, news kind of thing. So with that being said, to start it off, I had a chance to watch the first three episodes of Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, um, Season 2. As of this recording, the fourth episode is out. I just haven't had a chance to watch it yet. But overall, so far, it feels like the story is a lot better and more even than what I remember for Season 1. Season 1 was fine. They, you know, you have a lot of character development because you're dealing with stuff from the Silmarillion. You don't necessarily have all the every single of the same characters from The Hobbit or lord of the rings even though you have galadriel and elrond um and you could figure out in the first you could figure out that how brand is sauron and the stranger from as far as i can tell is going to be gandalf and things like that but for me the episode presentation in season one was kind of uneven where it's like a lot of stuff happened in the first half of the episode and this is broadly speaking so not necessarily every time but for me the first half of half of the episode was a more um information filled part and then the second half was just follow up rounding stuff out random conversation and you know kind of uneventful stuff so so far in the first three episodes of season two it seems a little bit more even more um balanced and all of that so getting through the episodes was a lot easier um we have a lot more even back and forth with things like as far as sauron and halbrand what he did the stuff with the elf inventor guy galadriel um the human the the humans and the dwarves and all that stuff so um overall good stuff for me so far the highlight of the three episodes was going to cause Ka- i'm gonna say it wrong but the i think i'm gonna say casa dune the mm-hmm. dwarf uh, mountain place so going back there was always good and then dealing and seeing it you know the windows closing and all the uh, fallout from that the son and the father and their discussions about stuff and you know their personalities and stuff like that so overall very um interesting three episodes so i actually can't wait for more or can't wait to watch episode four so um with that being said so far i'm going to give it a recommendation but as far as week over week reviews i may not do anything special until the end of the season just to see how it finishes but i'll give my probably just the usual updates and what you know quick thoughts but that's about it so but so far if you were not too big of a fan on season one um i'm gonna say as of now give season two a chance because the first three episodes seem to resolve the issues at least that i had in the first season so um season two seems to have started on a much better note than season one um, I also had a chance to play one more level of Roller Coaster Tycoon. I saw that there was a relatively easy park, easy looking park in the Ruby group called Gentle Glen. Um, initially looking at it, it seemed like it was going to be hard just because of the way it's set up. It's a small park on a hill. Um, so getting to the um, guest count and rating seemed like it was going to be hard. But I was able to get through to the end and um, finish the... Um, level and pass it and all that so it's just a matter in this case of building into the mountain um you do have to it does start getting kind of tied towards the end of it but if you have enough pathways then you'll be able to keep enough guests um and enough people flowing through the the queues and all that don't go too crazy with the pricing and all that and it is manageable um it does seem a little bit more daunting than it seems but it can be done so a link will be in the show notes if you guys want to check it out and just get my quick way of how i resolved it so if you need that tips there so as a follow-up to what i said last week um i 
have to try to see about how uh, I haven't had a chance to unlock find a way to unlock the rest of the levels, notably in Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, um, or you know getting or finding any way to do that just so I can move on to those levels and skip the park value levels in Roller Coaster Tycoon 1. So that's going to kind of be on pause until I figure that out. I might try them here and there just to see if I can get through them, but um, I don't have very much luck with those, so we'll see about that. But um, regardless, the playlist is up on the YouTube channel and all those videos are there, so you guys can check them out and watch along with the ones I did, but um, that's kind of that update there. And then to round it out, um, I found out last, or I've been, not found out, but I've been continuing to play um, Pirate Doom 2, and overall I'm really enjoying the level designs. They haven't been terribly large or big or confusing or anything, so they've been really fun. They're relatively small but very well designed, so um, as of this recording, I finished what I'm calling the end of episode two, so there is another um, scenery change in that now we're in the, some underwater level. Um, but overall, the game is fun. It's about on par as far as if you played the first Pirate Doom, then you kind of know what's going on. Um, and then when you get into the second one, it's essentially an all new set of levels. Um, from the notes I read on it, it's kind of, I guess they fixed some of the weapon functionality and design and costumes and stuff. So overall, it should perform better as well. Um, so from what I'm seeing, like I said, it's pretty much the same as Pirate Doom 1, except it's a bunch of new levels. So I definitely recommend it. It leans a little bit more heavily into the pirate theming as far as, you know, um, ships and docks and... Um, shipyards and castles and things like that so i'm having a good time with it so as of this recording as well um all the videos through the end of episode two are up along with long play versions of episode one and two so um if you don't want to go episode by episode you can just have the long play of the first two episodes and go straight through them um but that's all I got to say for that as of now. Um, I'll have the final review when I'm done with the game, but overall I'm having fun with it. And you can see the videos as they go up um, on the YouTube channel as I play them um, by level. So um, that's readily available there. Um, but on a related note, um, so last week I had a chance to play a little bit more with OpenShot Video Editor and um, as it turns out, aside from the UI, it does have a couple of themes, but the default UI seems to be okay. It has a little, it does feel a little bit outdated, but once you get used to it and importing videos and images and stuff into the timeline, it isn't actually that bad to use. And um, it seems to use, or it seems to be a little bit more energy efficient than, or power efficient than KDN Live. Because even though I'm exporting the same kind of videos, it seems to be more accurate or more efficient on power usage, but also more efficient in exporting videos. So, um, like for the long plays of Doom, Pirate Doom episodes one and two, it gave you know I think it was like 45 minutes and like sorry 15 minutes and like an hour for the two videos respectively. Um, but in KDN Live. It seemed like it was importing it and trying to do it, but it wasn't really clear on how long it would take. And sometimes it would say, you know, hour and a half or jump up to three hours. And I think that's related to how Kden Live handles video files of um, screen recordings. So I think that's kind of where the hiccup is falling into place. So um, with that being said, the after the episode I recorded on Monday, um, they released a new update that seems to fix some stuff and improve some of the performance issues that I was having. So, um, exporting a 1080p video still is, for some reason I wanted to take like two, over two hours, but then with OpenShot video editors, like hour, hour and a half for a 1080p 60fps video. So, I'm not sure where the discrepancy lies. I still think it's the videos that I'm using. So. For now, I'm going to stick with OpenShot Video Editor just because it seems like it works a little bit better. Um, and I was able to find the transitions page um, in OpenShot, so um, I've been able to use start using those and playing around with a couple of different ones. So um, that's the other thing I like there is that it does have a lot more available transitions to use, so I can play around with that a little bit more and mix it up if I so desire. 
Um, but that's really all for this particular episode. Um, I did have a chance to rewatch Iron Man 1. I had an inkling to watch that, so I did. Um, still kind of holds up for me to the point where I now want to um, rewatch Iron Man 2 and 3. Um, overall, I enjoyed the films and enjoy rewatching them, so I'll probably do that as I have some time. But beyond that, I didn't really watch or do too much else. I'm kind of been focusing on playing Pirate Doom 2. So there's that and then watching Lord of the Rings. So um, that's really all there is for this week's episode. So for next week, look out for continued Pirate Doom 2 reviews, Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power review. If I have a chance to watch Iron Man 2 and 3, then I'll probably do a trilogy review there. Um... And then just as things come up, I'll do further reviews. But um, as I'm getting more and more proficient with OpenShot Video Editor, it's becoming easier and easier to use that. So, and this is nothing, and by the way, this is nothing against KDN Live. That's the first one I use. And overall, a super, for me, I like the UI and a lot of the importing features. It does, um, for me, that one's easier to use as far as that stuff goes. But just for some reason it doesn't like my gameplay recording so on any of the settings that I've used so that's why I'm using OpenShot video editor for now but for other stuff we'll have to see maybe I'll use I'll switch back and forth be between the two depending on use cases but um for me oh, for now OpenShot is a way to go unless they you know Kden Live finds a fix for that sort of thing or there's a plugin or something I can use or Maybe it was just a hiccup in the programming or something where it stopped working like it did before. So, um, but that's neither here nor there. I like both programs. So depending on your usage, I can easily re recommend using either program. But that is all for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, the links to the social media sites I'm on are linked on the website at headphonesneal.reviews along with past episodes, uh, ways to support the show and all that good stuff. If you want early access to the show, along with um, an ad-free version of it, early access to the YouTube version, then you can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash patelian01. The YouTube channel is youtube.com slash patelian01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.